So this week we are doing another suggestion from a listener. This one is coming <laughs> from Gabriel, and he left a comment saying, "Have you watched City of God? The editing in this film is so insane, and it's a well-known Brazilian film." And yes, I have, but uh, it's been many, many years. I barely remembered the story. Looked around, found a scene, and it just immediately put me into shock. I have to warn everybody: this is probably the toughest scene we've done so far, especially out of context. Like I saw the scene, and I immediately like, "What the fuck? Why is this in a film?" And then I watched the film, and it made a lot more sense. So, City of God is a 2002 film. It is a Brazilian crime film directed by Fernando Mireles. It depicts the growth of organized crime in the Cidade de Deus, suburb of Rio de Janeiro, between the end of the 1960s and the beginning of the 1980s. The film received worldwide critical acclaim, nominated for four Academy Awards, including Best Cinematography, Best Director, Best Film Editing, and Best Writing. Okay, three, two, click. Ooh, there's peanuts in this scene. Maybe it won't get bad. So, we are somewhere in the slums of the suburb Rio de Janeiro and we see a bunch of kids hiding in like a backyard of just a just a raggedy little shack and they're talking about what it's like how they want to be like gangsters and kill people yeah. and stuff and how they want to be like little Z who is just right behind them and just hitting one of the kids on the head and all these kids start running away squirming away and they're grabbing one little kid, probably the smallest one. This, by the way, is all oh. shot documentary style, so it feels super real. And so they're cornering yeah. that little kid. We can see the gun in the shot in the foreground. There's another kid that seems to be with the adults. And all the kids yeah. were trying to run away. One didn't make it, so they bring him back. And now they've cornered this little kid and this slightly older boy in the corner and giving them a choice uh, do you want me to shoot you in the foot or the hand and we're just yeah. zooming down on the little kid who now has to make a decision and i guess they're going for the hand and little but kid we also don't crying. even know if this is real if they're being bluffed or they're being pimped or you know At like this, that should yeah. be victory enough for him that they let him choose and then he sh actually shoots them in the feet and he did they pick the hand he shoots them in the foot and at this point, I'm like, what the fuck? I didn't think he was actually going to do it. I'm relieved at this point. I'm like, oh, it's just a one, one little toe, the front part. Yes. So then he walks over Could to the worse. other kid that is just standing by, and he tells him, well, you need to kill one of the two kids. And you have to do and it. The other one's saying, I'll do it, like it's something they have to do now, that these kids have been shot in the feet because they can't get in trouble. And the other guy's like, I'll do it. Yeah. Like, it has to be done. Like we're, yeah. and, and now we're on our protagonist. Little Z is keeping telling them, you need to kill one of the kids. Just do it. Don't waste my time. And this kid just starts oh. crying in a way where you just think this is real. Like, this is happening right now. There's no acting going on here whatsoever. I'm wondering, how did they yeah. make this kid perform like this? And then uh, off camera, he shoots the other fires kid. Fires off camera, so you think he's faking it. And if you want to go back through it and look at this thing, Sven's talking about the documentary style. And yes. it's... An amazing thing, because it comes off as if it was filmed, you know, I mean, just stuff was randomly grabbed. We don't know what we're, we're going to be. And yet that's how it was done. And in the editing, it became very strategic in terms of the, how the footage was used. Or it, that was just a creative decision that was made to have certain whip pans and stuff at certain points beyond the thing we want, just to give it that that feel of immediacy and presence. And in all of that, the shot that I think is a really important one as an editor, that's the kind of thing you find in the editing room that's so easy to overlook. We suddenly are on the kid walking off and we're on our main character, the one who's being formed and whose eyes we're seeing this story through. And it's such a tiny moment in this violence, but it's so, so, so essential to the telling of this story. And it almost seems like the footage they had was like almost an afterthought because he kind of goes out of focus in one shot and the other shot's not. It doesn't convey emotion in the best way. It just seems like he just wants to get out of there. He's disinterested. He, he's tired of it. But it's so, so, so important to kind of subconsciously re-associate us with who we're supposed to be seeing this through. So, And the other thing that's really cool about it too is the shots that are being picked 
all of them, including when he's making a decision whether to shoot or not, the antagonist showing up, these kids crying and being terrified, none of them are done in the way that you're used to in a traditional Hollywood film, let's say, where it's the close-up that you're just on everything perfect and pristine and you're capturing the emotion exactly for that moment of the story and conveying the performance. Instead, these moments that are being chosen for this stuff really feel like accidental grabs that they found. It's never really the perfect shot to show the character's expression. The performance is never really communicating something specifically. It's more they're just experiencing it, they're in the moment, and it's just being realistic. And I think using choosing those shots for this instead of the perfect one with the right shot for every moment, including when the kid dies at the end, that's a really good example of that. No one's going to intentionally choose that as the shot. And yet, like Sven said, the soft focus, the falling over in the background, it's just absolutely perfect in terms of everything you want to accomplish for that moment. Yeah, yeah. It takes away, it dismantles uh, us as a viewer because there's some comfort in knowing, okay, this is fake. And if you look, for example, at the cameraman is kind of like wrapped around the f- like this fence that is like closing off this courtyard, and it's mm-hmm. it's just shooting through the the wooden posts yeah. as the little kid is trying to like s- get away yeah. and is being grabbed and pulled back. That shot, I mean, it feels like the camera is right there in the middle. They didn't expect that this this uh, would erupt. And everybody's like squirming away and they're just running over the cameraman basically to get away. So th- it captures an energy that is incredibly real. So I was going to go to 43, 45. Love this shot with the gun in the foreground. The kid is not even looking at the gun. The kid is just looking at the grown-ups. And the irony that they just picked the smallest one, right? That's what you do. The mm. smallest one didn't get away. Um, yeah, so there are a lot of whip pans. We're going down on the kid as they Jesus need to decide Christ. about the hand. And you can tell at this like point that. how tough these kids get because the older one doesn't even cry. He just sort of makes this decision. I guess it's my hand then. While the other one is yeah, so all, young. But then, I don't know if they really even believe it. Yeah. Yeah. Like it just seems like the other one what's happening is also. So, so young and like he buys into this fantasy. We, like we think it's going to be a fantasy. He's just teaching him a lesson, but he's not. Yeah. He's uh, that serious. Yeah. So if you thought we went over the edge and this went too far, do let us know in the comment section for wherever you are. And uh, we'll try and find something better, lighter, not better, possibly better. But do I watch. Do watch City of God if you haven't. It's well worth your time. And it's good to keep watching great movies, not just what's out today, but great movies from the past to um, put yourself on a diet of just clean art. And this was just a short scene analysis. If you like this, you should really dig into the podcast. Just download it or subscribe to it on iTunes, Stitcher. Go on a run, use it in your commute in the morning and listen to us really nerd out on a scene. And thank you to Kurta for the music. And as Sven always says, happy editing. One, two, three, four.